Hey there, today we are talking about avoiding the lemming mistake in your business. Do you know those little lemmings? You've seen the cartoons with them going off the cliff and then the next one goes and the next one goes and the next one goes. Well, in small business, a lot of small businesses do that when it comes to the legal requirements of their business. And what am I talking about? So the most disastrous example that I came across recently was one of my clients. They are a pretty big firm. They turn over millions of dollars a year, multi, multiples of millions. They import a lot of goods and sell them to stores like LD and the Dollar Shop and things like that. They've been my clients for many years and they really should know better. In the past, they have had some problems with uh, inadvertently infringing patents, designs, and occasionally copyright, uh, and, and sometimes even trademarks. And so they, we've developed a system, they've become quite careful about what they import. However, recently, they received a letter of demand from Apple. Yes, the big computer company, Apple. And that makes everybody shake in their boots because Apple is not shy about suing people. So, my client sent me the letter of demand. It was quite, um, well, it would make anybody lose sleep, put it that way. <laughs> and I investigated the situation and I, I rang them up and I said, what are you doing? Apple have got, you know, hundreds, literally hundreds of patents and designs. What are you doing? And what had happened was our client had imported some, um, some chargers, you know, iPhone chargers. And they were selling these, but they were not genuine iPhone chargers. And my client's response was, and I couldn't believe it, my client's response was, everybody else is doing it. They said, I have seen these chargers for sale in Big W, in Coles, in Woolworths. So I know I'm fine because I've seen these chargers for sale. I'm like, are you kidding me? Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you can do it. The logic behind that is wrong because either um, Apple could be suing those other companies. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. Uh, the other thing that had happened with Apple was that there had been a, um, a period of time, several years, when Apple and Samsung were having this massive fight. It was like the fight of the titans. The one was suing the other one for patent infringement and the other one was suing them for patent infringement and they had this patent case going. It dealt with a whole lot of patents uh, and it was, it was, well, it was great for the, for the um, IP lawyers in Sydney. It just went on forever, for years and years and years. And all of their energy and all of their money was tied up in this litigation. And then after that, suddenly, they started looking around for smaller fish to fry. And so it could be that my client was just caught up in that net of being a smaller fish. It could be that those other companies, Big W and whatever, were actually importing a different product. So it might have looked the same, but it might have been different. So that might be why they weren't in trouble. It could be that they were in trouble. It could be that Apple was suing them too and we just didn't know about it. Uh, they could, or they could have had a license from Apple to sell that product. We just don't know. And so that's just one example, but there are many, many times where I see somebody doing something and they say, everybody else does it. Uh, for example, there used to be this thing, if there was an image on the internet and it didn't have a name on it, people thought you could take it and use it. And of course that's not the case. Um, but this lemming thing, Honestly, it's one of the biggest mistakes that small business or even bigger businesses make. They see somebody else doing something or following a particular legal course, and then they go, oh, it must be fine. Do not be a lemming. <laughs> you could end up going off the cliff. So the solution is do your own research, find out what is going on with your situation, and make sure that you are not in trouble. Another thing that could happen is that the laws can change sometimes. So even if you did something last week and it was fine, it might not be good this week. So I had a neighbor who, um, he ran a sawmill 
uh, some of you might have heard the story before. He ran a sawmill from his uh, from his home here, yeah, big small holding. And then later on, the laws changed, and then he couldn't run that sawmill anymore, and he didn't know about it. Another example is I know of a lady. She wasn't my client, but I, I know of her, I know her business mentor. She bought, bought a house, uh, and on the side of the house there was a coffee shop. So it was like a little granny flat that they ran the coffee shop out of, and then there was the house. This coffee shop had been in an, an institution in Ipswich in Queensland for about twenty years. Everybody loved this coffee shop, and so when my not my client, my friend's client bought it. She just thought, you know, it's a great buy. Everybody loves this little coffee shop. It's part of Ipswich history and culture. So she bought the house in the coffee shop. She decided to do it herself. She didn't need a lawyer. She knew what was happening. She created her own contracts. And then what happened? She'd been running the house or the coffee shop for two months. And da, 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 a city council inspector came to the premises and said, Where's all of your correct licensing palaver, whatever the, the city council needed? And she said, well, I, I don't have any licenses or um, whatever it was that she, she thought she could just run it out of her house. She thought she had done everything right. It had been run that way for 20 years. Uh, turns out, no, um, not only did it not have the correct permission, you know, under the Food Safety Act, also, under in that particular area, the city council zoning didn't allow you to run a food providing um, establishment out of your house. So she paid a premium for this house and cafe and within two months had to shut down the cafe because she was a lemming. She was doing what the other person had always done. And you've got to feel sorry for her because it seems logical that if you've taken over a business, you should be able to keep going the way the previous person was going. I have to tell you, the law is not always logical. And because somebody else is doing it doesn't mean it's right. It might just mean they just haven't been caught yet. Okay, so how do you avoid not being a lemming? You need to do your own research. And if you need to get a lawyer involved, spend a little bit of money and make sure that whatever you're doing is correct. And that's what you're doing um, when you do certain courses and things. Uh, you, you're getting to the point where you're making sure that what you're doing is correct for your business. So yeah, don't be a lemming. <laughs> Sometimes paying a little bit of money up front and getting the legal stuff right can save you a lot in the long run. It's Catherine Woolburton signing off your legal lioness.